Welcome everyone to Urban Pitch Podcast, uh, the beautiful game of life where we talk about uh, not only soccer and things related to that, but just life in LA, urban culture, pop culture, fashion, shoes, whatever comes to mind. So today we have a very uh, special guest uh, for our audience. You might go ahead and introducing yourself. Hey, I'm Thiago Lusardi. Uh, thanks for the invite, John. A pleasure to be here. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about this. All right, awesome. <clears throat> so it's a Tiago with a T H, right? Yeah, correct. Okay, so is okay. So because I know we have a friend, mutual friend, right? Tiago with a T I. Without which the one, H. Yeah, without the H. Which one's more common in Brazil, by the way? I think T H is more common. Okay. But you'll see a lot of us down there. <laughs> All right, so uh, give us a little bit about your background. What you know? What do you what do you do professionally? What are you into? You know? Uh, my whole life been doing soccer. That's okay. why I was brought up to do it. Like that's I think is. You know, most of Brazilians do, but right. yeah. But what do you do now, professionally? Professionally now, yeah. how do you make money? How about that? <laughs> uh, how do you bring in the? How do you? Yeah. How do you pay the rent? So I re I recently signed with uh, an agency, a modeling agency in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, if you mind saying it's Vision Los Angeles? Okay. Just yeah, and they're pretty reputable, obviously, right in LA. Yeah, right? so yeah. It's, it's been going well. I mean, you know, I wish I could be just well, living off soccer, but right. Yeah. But it's been it's been a good experience. Like I mean, growing up, I used to my family used to tell me like, why don't you just do modeling? Like you know, just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, why? Because you're good looking. Growing up, and so they always everyone's like kind of uh, asking you, know, why don't you get into it or I what? I mean, you know, mom, yeah. aunts, you know, everyone used to say, yeah, this, yeah, why don't you do modeling if soccer doesn't go right? And it's funny because I wasn't looking for it; it just mm -hmm. kind of happened here. Right. Yeah. Okay. So before we talk about that, so let's uh, where do you, where do you live right now? I'm living in Hermosa Beach. Just moved from Huntington. Okay, so I know you're a real big uh, beach guy, right? I'm so a beach guy. Yeah. So you're not up in LA yet, because you, you, you know, the last time we talked, you're you know saying that you were planning on maybe moving up to like the Hollywood area to help with the auditions and all that, right? Yeah. So um, I moved uh, three months ago. I moved from Huntington to Hermosa, but you know, since my girlfriend lives in Hollywood, I've been spending most of the time around Hollywood, and it's easier for me to do the castings too. So right, right, yeah. Okay, so you're originally from Brazil, though, right? Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro. And how did you end up here? When did you move to the U.S., and how did you end up here? It was in 2012. Well, at first, I have a um, I have brother that has been living here for 25 years. Mm -hmm. So when I was 17, that was 2007, he invited me over just to, you know, just to visit, to learn English, uh, spend some time with him. Mm -hmm. So I kind of liked it, got to play soccer for some clubs, you know, just playing street soccer too around just with friends and went back to Brazil uh, finally uh, got a contract played three years of professional soccer in Brazil and then I got the opportunity to move over here to play for Chivas USA back in 2012 so right so you say it's so nonchalantly let's let's kind of go into that a little bit more okay <clears throat> not too many people have that kind of opportunity so you were playing professionally in Brazil for a little bit for a second division club in Brazil yeah in Rio Okay, so you're playing which which club? It's called CFZ. Okay. Uh, many of you know guys Zico, the mm -hmm. Brazilian, you know, the player legend. Zico, NBA. not Zika, right? Zico, Zico, right? Back <laughs> in, yeah, legend from back in the '80s, played for the Brazilian national team. Mm -hmm. uh, really big in Japan. Uh, mm -hmm. Coach for Kashima Antlers. Okay. So he had a he had always had this uh, second division club in Brazil. That's who I grew up playing for. And 2010, I finally made it professionally. Play, sign a two-year contract, play two years for them. Okay. And then I got the opportunity, uh, got invited for Chivas USA for a trial. Yeah. So how did that happen? Because, like, Chivas USA, I mean, people that are familiar with MLS soccer, you know, they yeah. follow it. They know Chivas USA. And, and most MLS clubs, they don't really do scouting uh, abroad for lower division, you know, yeah. especially back then, right? They don't really have the resources mm -hmm. and whatnot. So how did that even happen where, you know, Chivas USA, a legitimate, you know, MLS club, yeah. you know, scouting you? So I had a friend uh, that I met uh, in 2007 when I was visiting here, and he was playing for LA Blues at the time, sure. and he had a connection inside mm -hmm. uh, Chivas. So he asked me to send, you know, videos and all my material that I had from playing back in Brazil. And I sent that. They got interested. Uh, they invited me to do a trial, so mm -hmm. I came over, you know, on my own. They mm -hmm. didn't pay for anything, mm -hmm. but I was like, you know, let's take a shot. I wanna. That's what I want to do. So, might as well just. So I left everything and came over. Um, 
you know, try did a trial for two months with them. Then I ended up signing for the reserves team, mm-hmm. played one season, mm-hmm. and that was great. Okay, that was a great experience. That's good. Okay, so tell us, uh, you know, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about soccer before that. So let, let's go back into the whole modeling thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you're you're modeling now, right? So how did you how did that happen? You know, besides the fact that you know people were saying you should get into it before, right? Yeah. And if soccer doesn't work out, so tell us how you got into modeling here in LA. So that was uh, two years ago. Was just walking around, I think, uh, in Newport. Mm-hmm. I can't remember exactly what it was. It was like a shoe store. Uh, and a photographer approached me, say, Hey, uh, do you ever modeling? Are you interested in a modeling career? I, have, I think you have potential, you have great looks. Um, gave me his business card and, you know, just say, shoot me a text if you ever interest. Look it up my, my portfolio, this and that. And so I kind of. So he was a so he was a scout or a photographer. He was a, a both. Both. Kind of okay. Fo- yeah. He was. Got a, it. You knew all the agencies here in LA, yeah. and he got interest. At, you know, helped me out. He did my portfolio. Nice. And he got me in touch with the agency that I signed. Right now. Yeah. Currently. So Vision. Yeah, Vision. But okay. It took it took like a year for the process of like you know paperwork, mm-hmm. everything getting done. So I signed back in December last year. Right. So were you when you were you said you were just kind of walking around Newport Beach area, right? You said yeah. So then is that when you were like were you walking around with your shirt off or something, or like you had just finished playing volleyball? No, I was, uh, it wasn't. At, it wasn't at the beach. It was okay. like at the mall, and okay, it was just normal. So then uh, you're obviously in you know really good shape, right? Yeah. What What do you do to stay in shape? Like, you know, what kind of workouts do you do? What's your routine like? Just try to, I mean, work out obviously like like five times a week, four times a week as much as I can, but also I mean. Pretty much a lot of you guys know just like uh, what you eat, like nutrition. Sure. and Yeah. So what's your diet like then? I try to like, you know, stay clean most of the time, mm-hmm. eat good stuff, not not a lot of fast food, probably like once a month. Okay. Yeah, but I'm not like a, a, a healthy freak or something mm-hmm. like that. Right. It's not like I'm not obsessed with it. It's just, just what it became like a lifestyle, just what makes me feel good. Right. Try to just eat clean for the most part, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it, not a lot of people have the, you know, easiness to do that. It's right. just kind of natural for me. You're saying, I know, because most people, they struggle with a diet, right? Like, yeah. it's really hard and they crave certain foods. I do that all the time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, But you're saying for you, you don't, you're not really into, like, junk food or, you know. I wasn't ever really into that. Right. Yeah, but I, there's got to be certain foods, like, you know, especially with your Brazilian background. I'm sure there are certain foods or, like, you know, everyone yeah. knows about Brazilian barbecue and, right? Yeah. The churrascaria. I do that all right? the time. Yeah, okay. So you do, you still hit up the churrascaria uh, and hit up the, the Brazilian, yeah, right? can never let that go. Yeah. What's the Brazilian cut that all Brazilians love? Picanha. Yeah. Picanha, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then you try to, you know, limit that intake every yeah. once in a while or what? I mean, and it, it's protein, so it's mm-hmm. not that bad. It's not like mm-hmm. it has some fat, but yeah, Brazilians can never let go of barbecue. Right. They'll probably do like every other weekend. So. Right. Okay. So then uh, with with the uh, with the modeling, uh, so give us some of your uh, best experiences so far. And then, you know, some of the like the shows that you've done or a modeling gig that you got that was pretty fun that you really enjoyed. Oh, we did some like good, uh, like I like to do editorials. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not good. I'm not really good at acting and commercials. Mm-hmm. So I stick with the like uh, they call print, which is just pictures and like really like fashion stuff. Uh, it was fun to do. Like two months ago, I got invited to do this uh, a participation with uh, the Alan Show with Alan DeGeneres. So mm-hmm, that was kind of mm-hmm. cool. Okay, so yeah, you were that you was were... that was the biggest thing. Kinda, okay, yeah. so you were uh, uh, you were on Ellen uh, Show. Yeah, okay. it, w- it aired last month for oh, nice. the movie uh, Finding Dory. Okay, yeah. So it's for a role that you got. Yeah. Like in the movie. No, no, no. It was just uh, to promote on a show. And like promote. to promote it. Yeah, it was ah, kind okay. of one of the segments they had for Alan's show. Nothing big, but it was just kind of cool, cool to, to be, be on there. It's like a big show. So. Yeah, yeah. It was huge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So what about one of the uh, the worst experiences that you've had? <laughs> Something that's or like an embarrassing thing. You know All what right. I mean? So I know that one. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Let's hear that one. Yeah. So my first gig after I signed, that was back in uh, March, I believe. Okay, so we had this uh, swimwear runway show here at Pacific Design Center on on West Hollywood, right? It was a speedo mm-hmm. show, like okay. a runway show. Okay, so all the guy, all the models are wearing speedos. 
All the models were in speedos. Not the Bra- not even the short Brazilian style. Uh, one, we had some speedo. pretty low cuts. Okay. Yeah, it was okay. kind of like, a lot. yeah, showing <laughs> okay. a lot. Okay. I wasn't ready for that. I never done that before. It was my okay. first gig. Okay. And it had to start with that, you know. It, okay. it was a Brazilian, uh, not a Brazilian based company, but you know they focus on Brazilians. Of course, they're wearing, they're they're selling sungas, speedos. So it was kind of awkward, yeah, because mm-hmm. on the background we had to change, and you know, mm-hmm. there's like a hundred, you know, over like a hundred people working staff, and every time we come back from the from the runway, we had to just go butt off naked, yeah, and put on another one right away, yeah, okay. That so there's a bunch yeah. of uh, staff back there, right? A bunch people of that are staff, working, and it's in the mi- yeah. There's no like changing rooms in right. the middle of everyone, so mm-hmm. that was kind of weird, yeah. Okay. I, would, I mean, for the most part, were they professional though, or does it seem like every time you're like getting in between changing, all of a sudden a hundred eyes are on you? You know, you know? to be honest, uh-huh. I, I didn't even pick up my eyes, so I, I didn't want to like <laughs> right, feel just, the, yeah. Just stayed on your eyes on the ground. Yeah, I just I did what I had to do. I see. Any uh, crazy fan stories, you know, of like uh, funnier or, or you know crazy fans coming up to you and recognizing you, or you know, or online stalking you, kind of. Uh, a lot of funny stuff goes on on social media. Yeah, do you get a lot you of DMs? Know. Yeah, a lot Instagram? of DMs, you some do? weird stuff. Yeah, yeah me too. I always know. get I always get tons of girls DMing me too, wanting my number. Does that yeah, happen to you too? Of course. Yeah. The, you know, <laughs> the problem is because of the modeling career, I get both g- right. guys and girls. But you know, gotta. Okay. Yeah. Oh you know, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. So you get a lot of uh, male uh, admirers as well. You're saying DMs. Well, in the in the in the field I am working right now, that that's pretty comments so right i just you know i'm, I'm cool i respect everyone so right. it's it's cool it's just part of my what i'm doing my job right now my current job but it's cool there's some there's some good uh, recognition too from from people so it's it's nice right so then let's let's talk a little bit more about uh the soccer thing again uh, uh and you know I know you were at Cerritos College for a bit, right? Weren't you the captain? How did that happen? Was that before or after the that Chivas? Was right after, okay. That was right after Chivas. Uh, end of 2012, yeah, I got uh, picked up by Coach Benny Artiaga from Cerritos College. And he just, you know, that was the guy that helped me the most out here. Right. And not, not too many people may not know that's outside of soccer, but Cerritos College is a huge... Uh, juco program for soccer right like top players usually or especially in southern california they yeah. go through Cerritos college if they're yeah they're i lucky, learned right? that after actually i mm-hmm. didn't know because you know i was new here i didn't know what schools were good or anything uh but i kind of like i liked the program i was there for a while without without being committed to just training with them and i saw a really good level i was like wow this is this is something like i'll i can see myself playing here um yeah, he helped me a lot uh, throughout the the process, like enrolling classes and everything. He was very supportive, and yeah, I love him, man. I say, you know, that we call uh, Cerritos gang forever. Mm-hmm. Once you're a Falcon, you're always a Falcon. And right. It was a man great experience. I learned a lot of things. Uh, I think that was the biggest uh, experience I had out here. It was. Especially the second year as a sophomore, being captain, like I barely spoke English at the time and had to lead a team. Mm-hmm. It, it, was, it was great, man. That that made me really, uh, m- really proud and like feel like wow. I, it brought me back into that soccer. Like I want to do this. Right. Yeah. And, and so we first met like right after or right around the time when you were playing with uh, Brazuca Ballers, right? Mm-hmm. And you you were playing. You're and you still play. But uh, when we first met, you guys had just won the recent Nike Risk Everything tournament, right? Yeah. And Brazuca Ballers is uh, like a, you know, primarily made up of Brazilian guys and you guys mm-hmm. are really good. Tell us a little bit about your whole, um, you know, soccer background with the street soccer, you know? It, you know, did you go up playing street soccer? And tell us, you know, do you enjoy it? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, I was always like a, more of a outdoor player, like a field, 11 on 11 player. Uh, futsal is more of a I mean they play everywhere in Brazil mm-hmm. but in Sao Paulo is more of a, a bigger thing like futsal where Tiago's from right yeah futsal is more indoor soccer and street soccer but of course in the favelas in Rio you always you know, any any block you go you see people playing soccer in the streets barefoot and all that and the, also we have the beach soccer in Brazil so that's kind of like hybrid as right. well so you started so you were when you were uh, in rio growing up you did play street soccer i and, play street soccer yeah. and i mean in brazil it, there's this thing oh poor, poor in the poverty you, mm-hmm. you see guys playing 
in the favelas but it's actually anywhere like you go to a rich community you see ballers too like it's it's everywhere so i i saw both sides i play in the favelas i play in rich communities and there's always street soccer everywhere not not really sometimes not even like a a court is necessary we're just you know we've seen this we put like two rocks to send to like uh sandals and just play soccer right like as so, it goes right so now here like especially in la mm-hmm. uh, there's a, a large uh, proliferation of street soccer happening right we have a lot yeah. of tournaments right we have big companies backing it up like nike adidas uh red bull right so when you see that happening and you're playing in these tournaments it's kind of like you have like a little bit of, are you happy about it? And, you, and also you have this like advantage, right? Because you grew up playing it, whereas yeah. the, pl- the players here in the U.S., it's not as common, right? Yeah. I'm like, of course, it makes me happy. Uh, it's funny because first, uh, it's, it's going to be 10 years from the first time I came over here. And I remember playing street soccer here and the level wasn't that good. I mean, you, we... We could see that advantage of whoever grew up playing on the streets in Brazil, but now everyone, it seems like everyone's catching up, like the, the tournament we had last weekend, mm-hmm. and it's like, wow, like, uh, the advantage is kind of like, they're closing the gap kind of right. on us, you know, it's not, it's not that easy anymore, there's so, so many ballers out there right now. Okay, and so you also mentioned, uh, like, beach volleyball, or, or excuse me, uh, beach soccer, right? Yeah, that's something that you grew up uh, playing as well. So I, I I was in Brazil before with uh, you know a friend and uh, a few years back and I saw them playing not only uh, street soccer but uh, you know beach volleyball right yeah. foot volley right yeah foot volley foot volley and uh, I was just like amazed right because first yeah. of all playing uh, beach volleyball you know regular beach volleyball two on two yeah is very very difficult okay it looks easy right yeah. and a lot of people love watching it on TV yeah and especially a long time ago back in the days when it first came out and they had these companies that were promoting it. I remember everybody wanted to go out there and play, but two on two on sand on beach is very difficult. Yeah. Right? It's not, there's no joke. It's a huge court, and you're trying to, yeah. first of all, when I play with my friends, it's like there is no spiking going on. All it is is, you know, three bumps over, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, and then when I was in Rio and watching guys playing without their hands, you know, just all head, chest, and legs, and the, right? I was just like, wow, these guys are on a whole nother level, right? Yeah. But then you grew up playing that a little bit as well. You know, tell us about your background with football. Yeah, well, it's like in Rio, you play a little bit of everything. You're, it's a culture to go to beach pretty much every day, especially on the weekends. So, I mean, since I was a kid, I remember seeing guys playing football with 2v2 with no hands. And, I mean, I think when I was 13, I had my first experience. I asked a couple guys to, to join in, and it, it was really hard. I mean, even though I played soccer my since I was like four years old, I had the touch, I had the, you know, balance, but it's a whole different level. It's a whole different story. Right. So, yeah, but, I mean, after playing, s- like, for seven, eight years, I finally got the hang of it, and it was good. It, it takes it takes kind of a long time to learn. So it's it's a, not that it's easy. A, yeah, it's a very long uh, learning curve, right? Yeah, Deep, right? yeah. So totally seven, eight different. years in Brazil. Yeah. Okay. And so, but now you also play here in the U.S., right? You play in Huntington Beach all the time, right? Yeah, now we're starting to have professional competitions out here. Uh, we're having some support. That's the the goal is to make football league grow here in America. To, just like street soccer is happening, we wish that that could get some exposure as well. Uh, it's a big thing in Brazil, of course. Now it's spreading to Europe. And also there's talks of uh, we're trying to do a big push to see if we can get added to the Olympics as well. But we need more uh, women playing. Mm. That's the big issue so to then, become an Olympic sport. Right. So foot volley for women, do they play on a lower net, like in regular volleyball too? Or? Same, same, same size rules. net. Okay, what's the height of the, the net for foot volley? It's 2, two, two. Ten meters, 2.10 okay. meters. So it's lower than regular volleyball though, right? It's like 12 inches lower. Okay. Yeah. So then what's the kind of uh, like an athlete profile that would be a good – because obviously there aren't that many foot volley players in the U.S., right? Yeah. So and, and you know you play it all the time, and you, yeah. you know you, people see you playing it. If you're trying to recruit somebody, what kind of athlete would be a decent, you know, would be able to make that decent transition from whatever they're doing? You know, it would be a, yeah. more of a soccer player, would be a more of a volleyball player, or just like a straight up athlete. <laughs> who do you go for? Who who would be like okay, he might have a you know a decent potential to be a, a, a foot volley player? Yeah, without any doubts, a soccer player. Okay. First of all, first and foremost, you got to be a soccer player. You got to be a soccer player. You got to be familiar with this. It's a soccer ball. It's pretty much it's a soccer ball and. Uh, 
Yeah, like 90% of the full volley players started playing, came from soccer. They have soccer background. So, I mean, play, know how to be, be good soccer players, the first thing. Have a good touch helps a lot. And then, like, good aerial game, like, you have good, good hops, good headers. That will give you some advantage. But the, the whole chess motion is what intrigues people the most, like. Mm-hmm. That's what takes the longest to learn, and it's the part you use the most. I think uh, I remember first time we met, we did the chess to the wall. Yeah, that was a that was a nightmare. Yeah, I couldn't and, get it and, down at all. Yeah, and and that's that's the biggest issue everyone has in the learning process. Mm-hmm. But once they get the hang of it, it's just it's so much fun. It's okay. super addictive. See, now I don't even feel that bad because when you when you were showing me the whole chess, you know, what do you call it? Chess bump? What would you call that? It's a chess set. A chess, chess pass. Okay, yeah. like a chess pass or a chess set, right? When you were doing it, you know, you were doing like 50 times against the wall, like it was nothing. And then yeah. you're trying to teach me. And I could, I was tr- struggling to even get like one or two going, right? Yeah. But now you're telling me this whole seven, eight years of learning. Now I don't even feel bad. Then I was just thinking I was like horrible, right? Yeah. <laughs> thinking I'm not really good at soccer and or being an athlete. But yeah. now you didn't tell me then it took you seven, eight years to get to that level, all right? Take, so now I don't feel bad a, at all. It takes a long time, man. Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. Let me know that next time. Right? Okay. <laughs> I was depressed for like a week, man. All right. <laughs> So then uh, it sounds to me like, okay, first and foremost, you have to be a, a, a good soccer player with good touch, right? Yeah. You're not going to go out and recruit a basketball player. It just won't happen. It, it won't, won't happen. It won't work. I right? mean, volleyball players, they ask us whenever we're playing down there in Huntington Beach, you know, we're surrounded by volleyball players. Even the Olympic, uh, Casey Patterson and Jay Gibbs, they once uh, looked at us and said, hey, let's my, my join it. But uh, yeah, volleyball players, they, they, they're amazed with it. They're like, oh, how, how do you guys do that? Like, it's... Because we understand the, the mechanics of it, the, the, you know, the movement, but it's like no hands. We we'll have to be handcuffed to play that. So, yeah, definitely soccer players. Right. And then, you, but then, uh, so if we're looking at, like, let's, just, let's take, like, the two best soccer players in the world today, right? Mm-hmm. Which most people think are obviously Messi and Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Right? So, Messi, and they both have really good touch, yeah. right? And they're both really skillful. But out of the two of them, I, I don't think Messi would make a very good football player. <laughs> what do you of think? His height, right? height, and you know what I mean. He, you know what I mean. You got to be extremely athletic, and you have to jump, and you know yeah. you got to flip and do the you know the shark attack with your feet, right? Yeah. So you take like you know, arguably one of the top two players in the world. Yeah. And probably he will not make a good transition over to football, though, right? What do you think? Uh, between both of them, I'll take Ronaldo because of his hops, insane hops. So right. I think he'd be good. Yeah. Uh, Attacker, good right. hatters. Uh, so it sounds to me like it, you, the a good profile for a foot volleyball, foot volley player would be a soccer player that's really good, yeah. but also kind of more on the tall, athletic side versus skillful side. Yeah, right. I, I would say that, but also it's it's contradict contradictive because uh, one of the best foot volley players of all times, he's like five six. Really? So it's like Messi height. Wow, okay. So, so maybe, maybe Messi would be yeah, decent. Yeah, he, he has some disadvantage but on his attacks, but he's like, well, Messi is very explosive, so he can cover ground. That's He'll true. be a good, like, we don't have, like, defender and attacker in right. football. Got to be all around. Yeah, got to be all around, cover ground. But, I mean, if you're fast, it helps a lot, too, in your touch. I mean, but you got to be able to jump and attack. So I'll take Ronaldo over Messi. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So then uh, out of, uh, let's see, out of, so, okay, let's do this. First of all, out of the soccer, what what do you prefer? Do you prefer eleven a side or do you prefer small sided? You know, what do you prefer? You know, do you play like playing on the street or do you like playing on the grass? First of all, it's funny thing. I prefer street soccer. Okay, because it's like it's open style. It's like you do whatever you want. There's not like a lot of tactics. It depends if you want to play to win a tournament or you want to play just to have fun with your friends and you know just ball up right so but you like so you like street soccer i like street soccer always like street soccer better uh, just about moves and, and and you know having fun express right. yourself but my my forte always being uh, outdoor that's okay. that's what i play for for real so outdoor street soccer yeah no uh oh your style you you prefer uh you're, you prefer street soccer, i prefer street soccer but you're more suited to the outdoor game the 11 yeah, side. okay yeah. you're better at the 11 I'm, i think i'm better at the 11 when okay. i have more space wow, okay yeah. interesting yeah i haven't seen you play 11 aside but mm. you know i've seen you play street soccer so i can mm. only imagine so then uh let, let's say out of the three okay your three passions okay. right now right we have 
soccer. We yeah. have foot volley and modeling, right? Okay. And you got to choose one, okay? You got to quit the other two. Soccer no matter what, man. That's number one, huh? Any given day. Wow. That's, that's what I was raised for. All right. That's soccer. The other things happen because I wasn't able to play soccer. The modeling and foot volley, mm-hmm. it's, it's a, I wouldn't say a hobby because it pays a rent, but it happened because I'm unable to play soccer right now because I'm waiting for paperwork to be done so I can go back and, and do what I what I think I know. Okay, so that's yeah. all right. So even though it pays the bills and you love doing it and it's fun and all that, soccer is your true passion. Yeah. And that's something that you want, you are actively trying to get back into. I want to go back to it. I would, okay. Like if I had opportunity, I'll drop it, everything tomorrow and okay. go back. That's what I want to do. Right. So let's let's talk a little bit about that because uh, soccer in the U.S. is really growing, mm-hmm. right? And uh, there's a lot of unique opportunities that are out there right now, yeah. right? And there's like uh, MLS, right? Yeah. You know, we have three divisions right now, right? We have MLS, we have NASL, right? Division two, and we have USL in Division three. Correct. Not yeah. only that, we have a, a thriving uh, Division four, right? Mm-hmm. We have friends, right? Like Miguel that plays uh, for the LA Wolves, right? Yeah. That are semi-pro. There's PSA Elite. Exactly, PSA Elite, right? The teams out there that are the UPSLs, right? Yeah. Uh, of the world. Uh, so there's, you know, f- legitimately four divisions. And then we also now have coming up soon in a year or two, we have PFL, yeah. right? Professional Futsal League, right? And uh, in my mind, you know, I think you would be like one of the top kind of guys that would have a really good shot of making PFL. Mm-hmm. Uh, not because you're not good at outdoor soccer. And it sounds to me, you're probably better at outdoor soccer. Yeah. But PFL, you know, professional futsal, like you grew up playing that. And I've seen you play futsal and you're yeah. crazy athletic and you're, you know, a lot stronger than, you know, you looking for your size, right? Mm-hmm. What What are your thoughts on, you're saying you want to go back into soccer and that's your yeah. goal. What, 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 you know, what's your kind of goals here? What are you reaching for and what do you think about that? Okay, so I have both in my mind. I saw, I, I read about it like last month about PFL, uh, PFL right? Mm-hmm. PFL. Yeah. Professional futsal league. Exactly. Yeah, so... Yeah, I, I got super excited because number one goal is go back into uh, outdoor, like MLS or whatever, NASL or USL. Um, I, I consider myself a, a better player outdoor, but since I have this passion for street soccer and if they could really put together a strong futsal league, I, I mean, it would be amazing to be part of it. I'll totally, if, if soccer outdoor doesn't go right and I don't get my my shot at it, you know, I would just probably fall right back into street soccer. Right, that's another viable option now, right? Definitely, in the US. yeah. I have both in my mind right now, and as soon as I get my paperwork in place, that's what I want to focus. Awesome. Okay, let's let's go a little bit back back to what uh, we talked about earlier with the whole DMs and you know the girls and the yeah. Instagram. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the girl situation. So, like, obviously. Uh, you're in modeling and you have assignments. You're out in LA a lot, right? Uh, what What do you you know? Do you go out a lot? Do you you know what I mean? Do you? It doesn't seem like I don't. You know, you never struck me as kind of like the party animal type. You know. So, mm-hmm. but what do you do for fun at night or on the weekends? I mean, yeah, I was never the the party type, even back in Brazil when I was like a teenager. You know, uh, and which is rare, right? Brazilians are known for partying, right? Exactly. Yeah, very well known for that. Party <laughs> till six a.m. <laughs> and go straight to the beach <laughs> okay but uh, and party some more at the beach right yeah that was never me i was I, maybe because i was so uh, focused in trying to make it out and uh, make it in soccer so never like alcohol never enticed me or anything like that you know parties and uh i mean the whole modeling thing of mm-hmm. course you bump into a lot of uh, it's part of the it's part of the job there is parties there is celebrities there is a lot of fun stuff going on but i'm like i see that i always pass on it like i'm never never out there i just go do my job uh, so yeah. there are there are instances um, and there's a lot of opportunity out there where it's pretty is it like you know what i mean because most people are not familiar with the modeling world yeah. right uh, I don't know anything about the male modeling world yeah. other than uh, watching Zoolander. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I don't think that's pretty. I don't think that how how accurate is that, right? Yeah. So like, uh, is it, so there are a lot of parties that you're invited to. Are you meeting you know different people that are in the industry? So you have those kind of opportunities. Yeah, all the time. I mean, it's just it's just not me. I mean, uh, in the beginning, I had to do just because it's part of it's part of the the career. It's part of the job. You have to do it sometimes. But I mean, I'm I'm not a big I'm not big on parties, and you know, there's a here and out in LA. There's a lot of drugs and and parties and all that stuff. That's not the route I want to take. So 
even though I'm modeling, I could easily be that guy. Uh, I want to stick to my to my you know training and focus on soccer because end of all, that's what I want to do. So then, tell us uh, what, what what do you look for in a girl? Then you know what are some of the qualities that uh, you look for in the uh, the uh, the female you know yeah gender. <laughs> I mean, I feel like everyone has a type in their mind, sure. but it, it's not always it goes exactly how you. Like you're never gonna find someone exactly like you you wanted to find like the the qualities that you put on the list for a girl i mean um, what are what are those qualities that you like what would be the normal top three qualities that you kind of look for in a girl i like a girl that likes like to do a lot like very active likes to do a lot of like sports just like me because i mean it would be weird if i was with a girl that wouldn't like to be out doing stuff or right, sports right. or anything yeah. so that, you that wouldn't, you wouldn't match right yeah you're such match. an outdoor guy and you're always at the beach playing soccer football right yeah and she's just you know wanting to go shopping all day or stay at home watching movies all day kind of right? yeah i want to be able to do stuff with my with my girl okay. you know and uh i mean that have a person that have goals in life you know that that wants to be someone wants to do something you know um not just sit at home that's... being pretty, right? Yeah, I you think want that, those are ambitious. the most, Yeah, go out and after what you want mm -hmm. and pursue your goals right? and help each other, yeah. Okay, so what about currently? What's your current situation then? Is there someone that fits that profile that you're kind of seeing right now? What is, you know, is the land just this wild land that you have opportunities? Well, you know, what's the, what's the deal with Tiago and women right now? Well, yeah, since the beginning of this year, I found someone that fit right into those qualities and they bring pretty good together, yeah. No, she she helps me out a lot. I think we help each other out, and she's an athlete too. Mm -hmm. So what did, what does she do? As she's a, a professional skateboarder. So a professional skateboarder. She gets paid to skateboard. Exactly. Wow. How how good of a skateboard is she if she if she's professional? <laughs> I mean, yeah. you've seen her skate, obviously, right? Yeah, she's pretty good. Okay, I mean, so she's, she's out there. She's, she's one of she's one of the top out there. She's yeah. one of the top. Yeah. Okay, top skateboarders that are out there. In the world, yeah. In the world, yeah. Okay. Is she here in LA too, or is she's she... in LA? Yeah. She, okay. We met. Here, we met out here. We met in Huntington, actually. Okay. How'd you guys meet? Tell us about that. Uh, funny story though. It's uh, just walking. I, I was living in Huntington Beach at the time. It was like uh, January, I think, February. Um, uh, and uh, it was through Snapchat. That's a funny thing. Okay. Oh, okay. This is a cool story. Yeah, Let's okay, go. Then. I I think I wasn't gonna tell, but uh, <laughs> let's get into it. All right. All right. <laughs> So walking on the street, going to meet friends to play foot volley, walking down Main Street, uh, had just board shorts on, I was barefoot walking. Th this time I was shirtless, like you asked me before. <laughs> okay. All right. Because right. so. we know that's one of your like number one go-to moves. No, if I mean if I'm a model, if I'm a male, if I'm a model, right? That's one of my go-to moves. Like every opportunity I get, I'd be wearing my you know Brazilian shorts and yeah, I'm from Brazil. Yeah, I'm a model. <laughs> All, right, yeah. All right. So that that was the occasion. Yeah. Okay. So just. Uh, just walking down, um, she was with a couple of friends walking, and um, she's pretty big on uh, Snapchat and social media, she had a lot of followers and everything, so she always like making a lot of, of taking snaps and videos a day, and, and uh, interacting with fans and all that stuff. So she had her Snapchat and she was like following me around, uh, Snapchatting me and making videos without me knowing about it. Okay, so she was doing her Snapchat. Yeah. And she has a pretty large following, obviously. Yeah. She's one of the top female skateboarders yeah. out there. Yeah. And she was filming you. Yeah. And putting you on her Snapchat, and you didn't know about it. I didn't know about it. It was, you know, behind my back kind of thing. So she was following you kind of She was following me around. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice. Mm -hmm. uh, she had no idea who I was and th that I was Brazilian. She's Brazilian as well. Wow. Okay. You sure you didn't plan this out? No. Okay. I, I, if anything, she planned this <laughs> okay, out. Okay. Maybe she, yeah, maybe she hunted you down on social media, yeah. right? Okay. So. Um, we happened to both, uh, went inside this Brazilian spot, like a uh, restaurant and things. And she kept doing the Snapchat. And at some point I noticed, but I didn't say anything. Right. But I realized something was going on. Okay. So at this point, were you getting more of a, uh, okay, there's a cute girl, you know, kind yeah. of like following me or was it more like, okay, there's a creepy stalker following me. What, what, which way were you leaning in well, the very I, beginning? I, the funny, I know who she was. You knew? Oh, because she's Brazilian yeah. and she's a skateboarder. Yeah, I, I, okay. I knew who so she was. So you recognized her. Yeah, I recognized her, mm -hmm. and uh, but I didn't see anything. I was just, you know, doing my thing. Uh, and I saw her Snapchatting at some time, but I didn't know it was like after like a lot of them. All right. Yeah, at some point I realized, didn't see anything, and just, you know, she went her way to do whatever she had to do. I went to play football, and later on a friend that is a big fan of her, 
he called me. He said, hey, you got to check this out. Uh, she, uh, this girl is, uh, you got to check her Snapchat. Just go follow her. Right. So I didn't follow her at the time, but right. I knew who she was, but I didn't follow. Okay. So I went quick, uh, follow on Snapchat, and I saw all this big story and videos, okay. and well, yeah, okay. I was all over Snapchat. Well, what were the comments that she was making on those Snapchat videos? Like, what was she saying? You know, she was putting comments, right? Is yeah. Just, right? What, I mean, she, yeah. she was, uh, cute butt. Look at this guy. She was guy. making was comments saying, yeah. in Portuguese. She was making comments in Portuguese, mm -hmm. like, oh, look at this guy. Uh, it's like a hot guy okay. blah, blah, like so they were all good good things good things okay. no pretty good things right yeah and yeah so i and then i i received a lot of messages from friends from brazil saying the same thing hey check this out check this out and i was like yeah i saw it. this is pretty weird like it's funny and we have a friend in common so he texts me and say hey why don't you talk to her why don't you you know send her a message and so I sent her a message making fun of her. Okay. Through through what? Through Instagram? Through Instagram. So you sent her a DM? Send her a DM. It saying was, like, hey, what did you say? What did you say? About I say, that? hey, uh, freaking paparazzis, man. <laughs> okay. Hey, for all the wannabe players out there, that's how you do it, right? You, you don't say like, hey, how you doing? It's just kind of a little joke and funny, I right? I say, hey, yeah. freaking paparazzi, man. And I say, hey, it shouldn't be the, the other way around. Mm. And I say, hey, next time, you owe me next time. Um got to do it in front of my face because it's behind my back's pretty easy mm, nice. so that was it and like three hours later she texted me saying like oh i'm so embarrassed i had no idea you're brazilian i can't believe you follow me this and that and you just kind of start talking and that's what led on okay so you went from the dms and then you guys kind of ch exchanged uh, numbers or and yeah and then we start uh texting it was, it was pretty quick too so it's pretty kind of flirt flirtatious right off the bat. So yeah. Like, right. Yeah. And it's been how many months now? Six months. Six months, and it's all good, huh? Yeah. So you want to say her name out loud, or do you want to so, do fans? To yeah. Say fans going? I think everyone that well, follows. I mean, if they follow you, they're gonna find out anyway. Yeah. Right? There's, so let's just say her name then. It's Ooh. out there. It's Leticia Buffoni. Okay, Leticia it, Buffoni. It's out there. Okay. Uh, you yeah. know, there's pictures on both my social media and hers. So right. Okay. People know about it. How long has she been a professional skateboarder? Since she was 14, so nine years now. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so she's uh, based here in LA though. And she's based in that. She's she moved out here nine years ago. She's been okay. here for nine years. So I mean, you're busy with your career, and she's, it sounds like she's pretty busy with hers. Yeah, right? she so travels often, a yeah, lot. How often are you guys able to you know sync up, and how do you guys do that then? Oh, she. I'm. I'm most of the time I'm here. Um, she travels a lot for competitions and just you know film with sponsors and stuff like that. So, but uh, most of the time she's here. We get to spend most of the time together so it's it's been fine yeah so if it, if everything goes well obviously she's a professional athlete you know you're crazy super professional you know athlete as well you're gonna have some maybe super brazilian professional athlete babies maybe right yeah maybe one day let's, right. let's see where he goes <laughs> yeah we can hope right yeah all right so then uh what 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 do you have on the the horizon you know what are your kind of the some of the projects or main things that you're working on currently right now um you know the modeling thing is I don't want to rely on that you know I don't want to just stick with that I like it it's not my passion so I just try to you know stay in shape train a lot for when finally the opportunity comes for soccer and I wish I, I'm trying to do some work with Fivoli too I have some projects with Fivoli like the the tournaments we organize here uh, we, we look for sponsorships and stuff like that we're just trying to grow Fivoli that's like my baby that's something i have on the side that i really want to i want to grow mm -hmm. as a hobby but but soccer is always going to be the number one thing mm -hmm. no matter what comes down soccer is always my my number one goal my it takes uh most of my my energy my time my focus is always always being prepared for you know my my paperwork can be ready in two months three months in a year i don't know but I want to be ready when I have my chance, so. Right, right. Yeah. All right, that was awesome. You know, I appreciate you being here. Do you have anything, last the kind of words that you want to say to the, the audience that's listening out there? Well, it's just a pleasure being here. It's always fun, you know, just talking about soccer. And, and uh, I, I'm just happy for the street soccer, the, the route that street soccer is taking, the, the direction that street soccer is taking here in the U.S. That makes me really happy because... Actually, when I move out here, that's something. Full volley and street soccer. It's 
two of the things that I miss the most. People talk about food. Oh, I miss this food from Brazil. I miss, you know, what I miss uh, street soccer, mm -hmm. food volley, and of course the vibe from stadiums that you can get here. That's totally different, Brazil. The, going to a stadium to see your team play. That's one of the things. Maybe one day. But I'm just happy that there's street soccer out there. The level is, is raising. That is, it's, it's so much fun right now. All right. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully the, the level of fans and uh, excitement and overall culture of yeah. soccer in the U.S. will get to that level. You know, yeah. we can only hope, right? Yeah. But we're starting to make those kind of str uh, strides. So yeah. I think we're getting there. But uh, yeah. Uh, it's it's very hard to compare to the Brazilian fans though, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're like the best in the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I guess that's it for today. Thank you everyone for joining us uh, on the Urban Pitch podcast, uh, where we discuss the beautiful game of life. <laughs>